Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Steve Soretsky. He's a Vancouver-based realtor online at SteveSoretsky.com. Welcome back to the show, Steve. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Steve, with the coronavirus panic quarantine lockdowns continuing with uh, no end in sight except in Saskatchewan where they'll start easing up a little bit next month, will we ever see uh, the real estate markets uh, get going again and, and what are the major concerns right now with this lockdown? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, obviously I think it's going to be a slow year, um, maybe even a slow you know, 12 months, 18 months, but, um, yeah, eventually I think it's going to return to normal. I think that, uh, life, life goes on. We'll come out the other end and, uh, with that activity, we'll slowly return to normal. But obviously that's not to say that, uh, demand won't be, uh, impaired. I think the, the, the demand side of the equation for real estate is, is going to be impaired, uh, moving forward as it is with pretty much every other financial asset class. Um, so yeah, I think that, uh, it's going to be, uh, a bumpy, uh, you know, year, year and a half, uh, until we start to figure out, um, you know, who's, uh, who's been swimming naked, so to speak. Now, how are real estate companies going to keep their, their heads above water during a time like this? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I think it's like, you know, I think like any downturn, there's going to be winners and losers, and, uh, I think that we're certainly going to see a lot of the competition. Uh, you know, fall by the wayside. People moving in different careers, businesses shutting down, and so I think real estate space is no different. You'll see some, you know, brokerages that weren't able to adapt or or didn't have the adequate uh, capital buffers to get through, uh, you know, a significant downturn like this. Those those guys are going to go under. Um, obviously, I think there's certain sectors that are that are more vulnerable. I mean, I think that. Uh, Anyone that's paying attention obviously it looks like the, you know, the commercial, uh, you know, commercial real estate is probably the most susceptible. That's, you know, I look at office and retail. I think those are probably your two time bombs right there. Um, but, you know, not, not to say that residential won't be impacted as well. It certainly will be. Mm-hmm. Now, the federal government has announced a program to help out small businesses, their landlords and, and rent. Could that be a lifesaver? Yeah, it's definitely going to help. No, no question about it. Um, it's not going to. It's not going to uh, prevent you know a wave of defaults. So those are still going to be coming, but it will certainly help mitigate uh, you know some of those losses for sure. I mean, they're from from what I'm reading, it looks like they're going to businesses are still going to have to pay 25 percent of rent. Like again, even some of these businesses, when your revenues go to zero, um, there's just there's no money to pay rent at all. Um, and then obviously the, the federal government's going to absorb the other 50% and the, and the landlord's going to absorb 25%. So, um, yeah, it will certainly help, but um, there's still going to be a, a wave of defaults for sure. The federal and provincial governments are on spending sprees. Could the resulting monetary inflation cause real estate prices to rise? Uh, not worried about that right now. Um, I think this is probably one of the most deflationary events we've ever seen. Um, so, you know, central banks are obviously trying to mitigate a lot of those, a lot of that uh, deflation as the central banker's worst nightmare. Uh, but I don't think that until you kind of re- repair demand, uh, you're not going to see any real inflation. So what you're seeing is basically, uh, yes, the money supply is increasing, but the velocity is, is declining and it will probably obviously hit new, new all-time lows. And so unless you get... You know, money turnover velocity up. Um, it's unlikely you're going to see any real inflation. So, uh, yeah, I think that's probably. I think the inflation story is is somewhere down the road. Whether that's you know a year from now or you know two years or three years or four years, I'm sure eventually, if the central banks try hard enough, they will eventually get it. But I think that right now, though, we're certainly in a very 
extremely deflationary environment um, that is obviously crippling when you have records amounts of debt. When we finally get out of this economic shutdown, which will hopefully be a lot sooner than we're being told, do you think consumer confidence will be there for an economic recovery? Um, no, not really. Uh, I think consumer confidence is obviously it's plummeted to, to, to uh, new lows pretty much cr- across the world if you're looking at those uh, consumer confidence indexes. Uh, but the reality is, is that, you know, we're going to reopen. There's going to be obviously an increase in consumer sentiment from that aspect. But the reality is, is the unemployment rate's going to be, uh, high. It's probably going to be in the double digits for the foreseeable future. Um, businesses aren't just going to go back and rehire everybody. You know, most businesses, um, you know, they're going to be looking at it and saying, well, what are, what are sales coming in at? Let's look at the sales. Let's look at the revenues. And that's, hire some, you know, people back slowly and, and, and look and wait and see. And obviously, you know, if we get into a scenario where a second wave comes through of, of you know, infections and, and these businesses have to shut back down again, then, you know, just is, is more layoffs. So I think everybody is just going to, everybody is kind of a wait and see tepid approach. I think you have to look at it from a business owner's perspective. And so, um, you know, I think a lot of these rosy forecasts that are out there that, I think it's going to be a swift recovery, I think, are very uh, ill-sighted. We'll have more with Steve Soretsky right after this. Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Steve Soretsky. Steve, household mortgage and corporate debt was at record highs before the virus panic. The banks are key to allowing debt to increase even more. What do you think the banks will do? Uh, well, I mean, right now they're tight, uh, obviously. Um, and I suspect that until we get a good read on, on what the re- recovery looks like, um, they're probably going to remain tight. Obviously, they're going to be dealing with a uh, significant increase in default foreclosures and all that. So um, that's you know just going to re- reflect in higher uh, loan loss provisions and um, likely uh, more conservative lending practices uh, until we start to get uh, you know start to figure out where all the bodies are and. Um, Figure out, you know, who's still standing, which which businesses are around, what, where the market settles out, where the price is, and um, you know, I think that once we sort of start to figure that out and, and enter into the recovery, then I suspect lending standards will be relaxed, and, and obviously the governments and uh, policymakers will obviously eventually try to ease um, standards to to try to reinflate things. But I think that we're still ways ways away off uh, from getting to that transition point. Isn't it a, a bit ironic that governments or central banks, which of course are pretty well government controlled, lower interest rates in times like this, but it's almost impossible to get that low interest rate money, which is supposed to, you know, bring the economy back to life. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, mortgage rates have come down here uh, over the last week or so. So that's, Helps, but it's kind of irrelevant. I mean, you can lower an interest rate to zero percent if you want, but um, if there's, <laughs> I mean, if there's no desire or confidence to borrow the money, or you don't have a job to actually qualify to borrow the money, it doesn't really matter. So, um, you know, kind of have to laugh that, you know, reading a lot of these uh, reports that are coming out, um, you know, from 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 specific people, I'm not going to mention names, but, you know, they're talking about, well, you know, the, the recovery in the real estate market will be swift. It's going to be in the back half of 
2020. Uh, pen, they're saying, quote unquote, pent up demand and low interest rates. Well, pent up demand. I mean, the pent up demand, you're going to have a double digit unemployment rate and probably a very lackluster economic recovery. Um, as people try to, try to, you know, get over this, basically try to repair their balance sheets. I and mean, you have people dipping into their retirement savings here, trying to basically stop the bleeding. Uh, the last thing they're going to be out going out and doing is, Pent up demand and buying two, two or three condos. I mean, that's just, it's just ridiculous. Um, the other one is low interest rates. Again, low interest rates are great. Um, but if you think about it, then we're not, we're not stimulating right now through low interest rates. So, you know, your, 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 your five year mortgage has come down to, let's say, 2.6% today. You know, that's exactly what it was pretty much on average over the last five years. So it's not like the, it's not like mortgage rates have gone from, five percent down to two and a half percent that you know there's that's creating more stimulus it's like no we've hit the effective lower bound of interest rates so it's 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 not stimulative at this point and particularly not stimulative when you again you don't have people having the confidence to a borrow that money b have the jobs to actually borrow the money and service the debt and c to have the banks actually aggressively lend that money um it just it's totally ridiculous Canada and Canadians are carrying one of the highest per capita debt loads in the world. Do you think there's an end game to all this debt? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I think the end game is eventually some form of debt jubilee. Um, you know, again, people, people I know have argued me on that scenario, but it, it, it's just the reality of what it is. Um, you know, we can certainly see, yeah, you know, well, I think you look at Japan as a, as a prime example. I mean, uh, the Japanese, uh, central bank basically owns, I mean, they're, they're, they're getting close to owning the entire bond market. I mean, what, what happens then? Um, so eventually the central bank will own all the JGBs, Japanese government bonds, and then eventually what are they going to do? They'll just have to basically stroke a check and say, your debts are forgiven. Um, you know, Japanese, Central Bank recently came out and said that they are now, you know, they're going to be doing unlimited uh, bond purchases. I mean, they they already own the majority of the bond market. So this is just the reality is, is that the world is is swimming in debt. Uh, obviously, policymakers are going to try to keep the system afloat and keep the status quo going. Uh, but the reality is, is trying to derive any real growth. Um, from from this level of indebtedness is is just not going to be this is not going to happen from a sustainability standpoint and eventually um, you know these debts are going to have to be forgiven and I think there's already a lot of discussions around it you know you know obviously the U S is talking about you know student loan forgiveness and and it's becoming more of a policy uh, conversation and so I think that we're kind of in the early stages to eventually getting to some form of, of debt jubilee. We'll have more with Steve Soretsky right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon. Trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Steve Soretsky. Steve, is this economic shutdown likely to cause a buyer's or seller's market in the Vancouver area and B.C. as a whole? Uh, well, Definitely a buyer's market. I mean, it's shifting more towards that. Obviously, right now, it's not a whole lot of activity. But, you know, if you're a seller right now, you know, I wouldn't say, you know, inventory is growing um, just because it's not a whole lot of selling. But new listings have obviously plummeted uh, significantly. Um, so it's kind of a weird market. But overall, you know, like, hey, listen, if you need to sell your house or your condo today, like, the reality is, is, you know, there's not a whole lot of buyers out there actively purchasing. So if you need to sell, if you need the liquidity, um, you know, you're going to have to take a little bit of a discount. You have to take a little bit of negotiating. and uh, So not, nothing that's crazy at this point. But um, again, as I suspect, you know, once these listings start to hit the market, I think that your supply factor 
is going to come online, but I just think the demand is going to be uh, impaired for the foreseeable future here until we can get back on our feet. I mean, again, you know, we've eviscerated uh, over a decade's worth of jobs um, in the span of a couple months, and and again, reality is this businesses aren't just going to go back and rehire all these people. Um, they're going to take things one day at a time and uh, slowly rehire people as we see fit, and there'll be realities, there'll be a lot of businesses that simply don't survive. So um, it's going to take some time to 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 uh, to grow, try to grow out of this thing. Could the economic shutdown cause foreign owners of real estate in Vancouver and B.C. to become sellers? Uh, I don't know. That's just that's just speculating, in my opinion. I don't really like to speculate, um, so I really can't say what, what they're going to do. I have, I have no clue. Uh, again, uh, Canadian dollar, where's that going to go if that gets cheap? I mean, it's obviously fallen quite a bit this year. Does that incite foreign investment? I, I don't know. Uh, it's such a such a weird environment. I'm not going to speculate. You know what what a demographic may or may not do. Are you seeing positive signs for real estate in Vancouver and BC as a whole? Uh, positive signs. I don't know if there's really positive signs. I mean, it's hard to see what the positive signs in, in this event in general are. Um, positive signs, not really. Um, positive signs maybe being that mortgages are being deferred and that's going to help, um, Stem some some of these bankruptcies and foreclosures and some of the hardship. Um, that's probably the, the the bright spot is that um, banks are getting a lot of help from policymakers, and that's obviously feeds through into households who obviously need the help. Given the record amount of indebtedness coming into this and the low and the low savings rates, um, they obviously need as much help as they can get. So maybe that's the, the positive sign, I guess. Steve, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thanks a lot, Jim. My guest has been Steve Suretsky. He's a Vancouver-based realtor. You can find him online at stevesuretsky.com. If you have any questions for Steve or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at howstreet.com. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at How Street. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.